Hey guys, welcome back to Blue Ridge Silverhound. I'm your host, Sean, and today we're going to explore another famous Lincoln Penny coin that has a whole, lot of a whole lot of potential, a whole lot to offer for not only the collector, but also for someone that's looking to make an easy buck on a coin that millions were made, yet there's a lot of varieties, there's a lot of a lot of stuff to really look for in this series but before we get started i gotta do my good old youtube thing as always if you haven't done so subscribe and hit the bell for instant notifications i'll be doing giveaways all summer long so you'll want to get into the inside track when those new videos are uploaded and uh, it's just my way of giving back to all the patrons and subscribers that have done their thing and supported Blue Ridge Silverhound the last eight years. So I want to thank everyone for the views and support. But let's go ahead and get started on this one. This one I'm really excited about. Before we get into the meat and bones of the actual 1960 dated Lincoln cent coin, first and foremost, I wanted to show you this little diagram I put together here. You're going to Throughout this video and other subsequent Lincoln Penny What's It Worth videos that are going to come in the future, you're going to hear me allude to um, coin condition and grade. Okay, so I have three coins here. Um, you know, I'm just using them as examples, but you have um, coins that are graded from brown to red brown and then mint state. Now, the Brown coins typically are going to be circulated, but there are mint state coins that can be brown as well. It's, you know, copper oxidizes quicker than any other metal out there. So, you know, after prolonged just being out in atmospheric conditions that are not conducive to copper, that'll change a coin, uh, the colors of these coins relatively easy. Hope I didn't lose you there. So on a brown coin, okay, it could be any condition from, you know, poor all the way up to mint state. When you get into the red brown, uh, you're going to be talking somewhere like AU condition and into the mint state grades. And then full red is typically reserved for full red mint state coins. Um, this is kind of the grading standards that NGC and PCGS follows. Um, usually if a coin is way too worn, they won't designate it either way color wise, but, um, you know, it, just in case uh, you get a little bit tripped up about the terminology of coin grading for Lincoln pennies, you could always refer back to this diagram. So whew, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So the 1960 date of Lincoln pennies, I've talked about in the past in one capacity or another, maybe I've reported on a big sale of one coin, or perhaps there's a variety that I touched upon. This video is a comprehensive look of every single business strike 1960, whether it's Philadelphia or Denver minted coin. Okay, these are coins that you could find in pocket change, coin roll hunting, just in general circulation. So the first coin I want to bring up is the 1960D large date Lincoln cent. Okay, there are four variants to uh, all together of the business strike coins. The, the first one is the large date. Now the way that you'll tell this and the small date apart is simply on the tail of that six, it's going to be longer. All right, that's kind of like the best diagnostic I could give you. Now, between both the large and small date, they share the same mintage, and now I'm going to get into a specific kind of like percentage of, you know, how, how what percentage will, will be a small date and what percentage will be a large date, okay, and give, give you an idea. So for this particular coin, there's no shortage, uh, 586,405,000 total pieces were produced for the 1960 Philadelphia minted coin. For the large date, now that we're getting into kind of like the grading aspect, the top grade by PCGS is Mint State 67 Red, in which 31 pieces exist, okay, with none higher, all right, there is no 67 pluses, no 68s, 67 is undoubtedly the top grade. So let's talk about the highest priced sale of such a coin in its history. Um, Heritage Auctions actually sold an example of this coin December 5th, 2013 at a Mint State 67 Red by PCGS for $3,819. All right, that's a quite a bit of money for a coin. Um, granted, 
This one sold about six years ago, so prices do fluctuate depending on not only the demand, but also the supply into the market. So this, this coin can be higher or lower, you know, depending on, you know, time of the year, the, the market in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at the small date coin right here. All right, so pay close attention to the six in the date. You'll notice it's smaller. It's got a shorter tail. Um, again, best diagnostic I could give you to discern one to the other, and it's naked eye visible. You could see this without the aid of a magnifier. Uh, again, you know, it shares the same mintage with a large date. It's all pulled into one, so it's 586,405,000 pieces total. In terms of grading, okay, 67 is the top grade. However, there are less of them out there, all right, through PCGS at 21. Okay, so 21 graded at a 67, none higher. Uh, the highest recorded sale, again, was by Heritage Auctions, December 4th of 2008, and this one was a mid-state 67 red, uh, for $4,600. So keep in mind, all right, the actual value of a coin in high mid-state grades, worth a ton of money. For a small date 1960, the good news is, is these have plenty of value all on its own without grading in varying degrees of circulation. I, you know, these coins sell for anywhere from three to five dollars if they're in pretty rough shape to as high as 50 to 100 dollars raw, you know, for a mint state ungraded piece. All right, so the coin in itself is worth a tremendous amount of money if you're able to find it. So those are the Philadelphia minted coins. Let's go ahead and jump into the uh, Denver minted coins, okay? Where the Denver minted coins far exceed the Philadelphia minted coins by a huge margin in terms of mintage, okay? So there is a small and large date. The one we're gonna focus on here first is the large date. And again, same diagnostic, use the tail of the six uh, to kind of differentiate the two different size dates. So 1,580,884,000 pieces were produced in total for both the large and small dates combined. In terms of grading, PCGS has assigned a top grade of 67 red in which 15 pieces uh, have been graded as such with none higher. Uh, here's a crazy part, okay? One example sold eons ago, actually not so much eons ago, it was only in 2018, on eBay, uh, and this one is a mint state 67 red for the sum of $20,000. All right, yes, you are hearing that right. I don't know if, if that's kind of like some weird one off anomaly, um, but from what I've seen in other auction sites, a mint state 67 red in a 1960D large date does, hasn't even sold remotely close to $20,000, but. For the sake of brevity, I'm, you know, illustrating the top kind of sale that's ever been recorded of this coin. So um, the coin in itself in a 67 red have sold for under a thousand dollars in the most recent past within the last like 12 to 18 months. So this one, I don't know where this one came out from. Yeah, I, you know, it's, I don't know if it, there's an error or something specific about it that makes it extraordinary. Uh, but that's the recorded sale on that one there. So let's go ahead and jump into the 1960D small date. Again, using the six in the date as your main diagnostic difference. Uh, the tail is shorter. Again, it shares that same mintage as a large date at 1,580,884 pieces. Um, grading wise, the top grade is mint state 67 red, in which 35 pieces were assigned that numerical grade by PCGS. Uh, and as far as the top sale, uh, actually this one right here uh, is a coin that sold on David Lawrence Auctions, okay, back in July 26 of 2006. So it's quite a, quite a bit of time ago. This one was a Mint State 67 red and it sold for $3,278. So from top to bottom, uh, you have a lot of coins, again, that has a lot of appeal. Uh, you, you know, the, the small date Philadelphia on its own is worth money. All the other coins, you have a lot of 
potential when it comes to high grades. But let's say you're not really a fan of grading in general and you want to find other things to find within this sp specific date. I have good news for you. Um, there are a myriad of various varieties, okay? The main one that you see right here is a double die obverse, okay? It's actually classified as a small date over large date. Uh, it looks kind of a mess, it's crazy. Plus you also have a pretty cool RPM, a repunch mint mark. So you see the secondary D north of the primary D, it looks like a ghosted D that's uh, nestled between the nine, the six, and the mint mark. This is one of the craziest varieties that you could possibly find of the 1960D Lincoln scent, okay? Typically, you'll look for a 1960D large date in order to find this variety. Here's the really phenomenal news about this particular variety. It's extremely valuable in all grades from, you know, just your general circulated kind of, you know, VF, XF type grade all the way up into the men's state grades. And these sell on the minimum, you know, 50 bucks and up. Okay, if you have one that's kind of a beater, it's been circulated, it's pretty worn, you know, you could expect to get about 50 to $60 out on the low end for this particular variety. So this one on its face has a lot of value and you don't necessarily have to get it authenticated. That's the good news. So that's the main double die of the date. However, there are a ton of repunch mint marks all on its own that you could look for. Okay, this is one such example. This is a cherry picker's guide variety. So it's one of the more notable ones. This is a 1960 D over D. It's a large date. Okay, so a lot of the main kind of like wild repunch mint marks you're gonna find on the large dated Denver. Okay, this one right here is RPM number one by classification. Again, cherry picker's guide variety. And this is a quick, easy sell in all conditions. You know, on the low end, five to $10, and then they go up from there depending on the grade. All right, so that's a really cool coin. I found a number of both the double die and the repunch mint mark coin roll hunting. All right, and I've made a handsome amount of money on both. Okay, so again, if grading is on your thing, definitely do not overlook varieties. Okay, and finally, let's go ahead and talk about a few notable errors that have sold here in the last 10 years or so. And you're gonna find that pretty much every single coin on this list, and that's three coins, these were found at one point in circulation. Okay, believe it or not, based on the actual technical grade that was assigned to each one. So the first one I wanted to draw some attention towards is this 1960D uh, Lincoln scent. This one has a partially detached lamination, okay? Some would see this as damage, but in turn, this coin was struck on a defective planchet. Okay, so you have bad kneeling going on here. And, um, you know, just a, a layer of the coin planchet flaked off after the strike. So this one here graded Annex AU58. And this one sold on Great Collections January 1st of 2017 for 45 bucks. Easy money, guys. Easy money if you found one. Again, you don't have to grade it. This is a coin that sells all on its own um, it, because it's a highly recognizable type of error. Okay. So the next one that we have here is going to be another 1960D, all right? This one was actually struck on a silver dime planchet, all right? Believe it or not, this one graded PCGS Mint State 63, uh, not a super high grade. It was probably circulated a little bit at one point, but this is a coin because, you know, the silver standard was still going on and coins were still being produced on 90% silver planchets. Um, it's still a possibility to find these out there. Uh, what's really cool is, you know, you, it, the devices obviously uh, were cut off. Okay, the date, you know, the zero on the date of this coin um, sheared off a little bit because, you know, it was struck on a smaller planchet than a penny planchet. But this one sold on Heritage Auctions January 10th of 2013 for $1,762.50. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the more sought after errors in coin collecting. You know, the transitional off metal planchet strikes uh, in general are all highly coveted. And if you found one, yeah, big money right there. 
So I have one more uh, error actually to show you guys and this one is a 1960p it's a philadelphia large date this one's cool all right this one is a full mirror brockage on the reverse all right it looks like it's staring at each other when you put the, uh, the obverse and the reverse image side by side but this is a really cool coin again brockage coins are extremely sought after they're one of the highest widely collected errors in coin collecting this one graded ngc min state 62 brown all right so uh, it's probably seen a little bit of circulation probably stumped a few people before it was eventually pulled out by a you know experienced collector that knew what it was and this one sold july 10th of 2009 on heritage auctions for one thousand ninety two dollars and fifty cents so from top to bottom whether you're into high high grades you're into varieties or errors the 1960 uh, dated lincoln cents has a lot to offer so do not overlook any of these coins because you never know when the next big thing's going to come into your hand and you can make a few bucks off of it i'm your host sean with blue ridge silverhound again feel free to like share and subscribe thank you for all the views and support hit the bell for instant notifications so that way you get more videos like this um coming up on your feed so you guys take care you keep hunting enjoy the hobby and i'll see you next time